and we are recording. Lovely. Um, so just to say again, in case anyone else has joined and just for the recording as well, um, grab a block or something that can fashion as a block uh, if you don't have a yoga one. It uh, doesn't matter if you don't have something. Um, put your mat near a wall so that you can walk feet up a wall or something if you're feeling brave. So just take 10 seconds or pause on the recording if you um, need to grab anything now and have some water just handy in case you get a little bit puffed out. Okay, so welcome to a uh, rocket class. I'm not gonna talk about the C word this morning. I'm just gonna get straight on to doing a practice and moving our body and getting going and shake it, shake it off a little bit. Um, so if you're not used to rockets, uh, welcome. Then let's have a bit of a play around. It will be very like um, Ashtanga, if you're used to Ashtanga um, in, in certain aspects and we'll play around with building some stronger levels into it. So I will cue you to, is, I will say something on the terms of, if this is enough, hold here. Um, if you want to progress, try this. If you want to progress, try this. There might be two or three or even four levels um, for some of the postures to build into, because um, I know some of you on the call already and some of you wanting the recording um, are used to rocket practice and I know what you're capable of. So do um do go ahead with whatever whatever feels good to do today um but if you are um wanting to hold a posture that doesn't mean that you're copying out of the next one um even holding a, a um, lower level or lower option posture can still be flipping hard work <laughs> and if you're holding a posture while i'm building in other layers to it and you're still holding that is going to progress your strength really quickly so absolutely if you want to just hold where you're at it doesn't and just because you can progress further doesn't mean that you always should either sometimes it's really good just to hold a warrior pose until you're sweating and swearing at me and actually on zoom calls when you're muted you can swear at me out loud if you like um but yeah please do look after yourselves um obviously i'm not here to i can't see you to sort of teach or to um god forbid hands on hands on assists aren't allowed anymore um so please be careful okay if you're not used to doing headstands please you know i'm not responsible for you hurting yourselves in these videos so just take care okay uh we will do a little bit of a warm-up into it as well so yeah basically be careful come to your mat and let's have fun Usually I have the music going on for Rocket, but um, I know it muffles the sound on the video call, so if you want to have music on in the background, then, then do go ahead with that. Okay, so just come to a cross-legged seated posture to start with, just bring your hands to your knees. Give your shoulders a couple of rolls down your back, so your chest feel open. Okay, and then just let the shoulders settle down your back, lift nice and tall through the spine, and just let the crown of the head just float above the spine. So to start with, just take a big full breath in and just let that flush out. And again, just take a big full breath in and let that flush out. Okay, so building in your ujjayi breath, so building in consciously, so we're going to breathe in through the nose. As you exhale, imagine you're sighing out as you're fogging up a pair of glasses. And again, breathe in. As you exhale, breathe out like you're fogging up a pair of glasses. So that open space at the back of the throat. Take the same process again. This time, fog up the glasses, but with your lips closed. And you hold that open space at the back of the throat. That is your ujjayi feel to your breath. Some of you are very familiar with that, so just build that into your next few breaths. If you're not familiar with ujjayi, and just try and find it every now and then, um, or just see how it feels. If it feels too uncomfortable at the minute, don't worry about it for today. It's just a really nice way to get your breath feeling really rooted and really grounded, helps to flush that sort of heat coming through the body and through the, restore, the um, respiratory system, sorry. Nice big full breaths. So if you've done the previous videos and my previous classes, you'll know about the IAP, that intra-abdominal pressure from your breath. So breathing into lower belly, side ribs, back ribs, just get the breath really flushing through the body.
Take another roll back of your shoulders and just drop your head towards one shoulder. As you exhale, roll the chin through your chest. And as you inhale, take the head across to another shoulder. Another, the other. Exhale, roll chin to your chest. Inhale, roll across. Exhale, chin to chest. And inhale, lift across. Okay, bring the chin back to your chest and then just bring the head to float so on top of the shoulders. Interlace the fingers together at the heart center and then press the palms out in front of you so you get a stretch through your hands. So really press out so you feel the shoulder blades open and tuck in your chin towards your chest. Just take a little sway of the arms going side to side if you want to, just stretch out your back a little. And as you're breathing and that's still that full ujjayi sound to your breath, kind of physically feel your back and ribs move as you breathe. Hmm. Keep that clasp with the hands, reach them up towards the ceiling. So you stretch the fingers and the thumbs out in that clasp as well. Try and draw the arms back behind your ears. You feel that stretch come across the armpits, the shoulders, the chest. And now while your ribs are really expanded, keep breathing nice and fully and deeply into your breath. Take another big breath in. And on your exhale, just release that fold of the hands, bring the shoulders down, and again, give the shoulders a little roll out. Good, just taking a simple twist to bring your right hand towards your left knee and the left hand behind you. As you inhale, go really tall through your back. And as you exhale, draw the belly in so the shoulders rotate, the ribs rotate. Still feeling breath into belly, ribs, and back. Switching sides, left hand to right knee, right hand behind you, breathe in to lift tall, and exhale to squeeze around. And then come back through to the center. Good, warming up wrists, strengthening into wrists. So bring yourself into an all fours position. My eyesight is so bad, hopefully you can see me again, yeah. So stretch your fingers wide into the ground and then take a little scrunch of your fingers. Okay, so your the middle um, knuckle of your fingers is lifting away from the floor. Keep the fingertip pads pressing down. Rocking forwards and backwards in that clasp of the hands. Like you're trying to scrunch up a handful of your mats into your palms is the feeling that you want to get. Then turning the fingers out towards the edges of your mat, rocking side to side. And then turn the fingers back the other way. So your fingers are facing towards your knees, just as far as they feel good to go. So you might want to keep the movement slightly smaller, or maybe just lean back towards your heels slightly, so you feel that stretch come through the wrist. If you rock forwards into the wrist and then open out through your shoulder blades, the chin tucks into that cat stretch, you'll feel a really nice opening around the shoulders and upper back. So take a big breath into that space. And then releasing, flip the hands back the other way, turn them in to face each other. So again, just a little transfer of the weight going around the hands. And then maybe turning them around a little bit further still, so it feels like the most awkward way you could ever place your hands. And then try and straighten up the elbows, a little transfer of weight going side to side. Eek. Okay, then rotate the hands back out again, give them a little roll out if you need to. So we're just going to flip one of your hands, so take the right hand, so back of the hand is to the ground, your palm is facing up towards your armpit. Okay, fingers are facing your knees, palm is facing upwards. Try and spread the fingers open so your fingernails are on the ground and then straighten up your elbow so the fold of your elbow rotates as much as it can to face the front. Then bend the elbow out to the side as far as you can bend it out and then straighten it again with that rotation of your elbow turning out. Bend it and straighten it. So just check you're not putting too much weight into the hand on this. But just rolling this uh, forearm through the ligaments of the wrists. 
but then keeping it straight with that rotation of it as far as it will come. Scrunch up your hand as tight as you can. So move that slightly to the side. You've got the back of the hand to the floor and you're trying to scrunch up into the weirdest looking fist that you can create. And then open it and scrunch it again. So here you are contracting the muscles of the forearm as we strengthen the support of your wrist around this forearm. Keep that going, scrunching and straightening. Check that your forearm stays straight and rotated as much as it can. And then release the hand, palm back to the floor, switching sides. So back of the left hand to the floor, palm is facing up towards your armpit and fingers facing your knees. Stretch the fingers open so fingernails stay on the ground. Straighten up the forearm and try and rotate it so the fold of your elbow turns forwards as much as it will be able to. Lots of people feel completely different in that rotation. Bend the elbow, straighten it with a rotation. You'll be surprised as well, just keep that going, how much this rotation will adjust if you do this on a regular practice and how much your wrist strength will progress if you do this kind of before each practice. I'm always preaching for students to, to do these exercises. Then holding straight with that rotation, you scrunch up your hand, make that weird looking, weird feeling fist, and then relax it, keep that elbow straight. I can see you. <laughs> scrunch and relax and scrunch and relax. Good, and then rotate the palm back to the mat again. Okay, so this time get your fingers completely flat to the ground and stretched open as wide as you can. From here, lift the palms up away from the floor. Keep the fingers flat to the ground and then slowly lower the palms down. Your palms up and palms down. Make sure they are lifting at the same time as so if you're going right one then left one and then down. That's very clever of you, but it's cheating. So do both palms up and both palms down. Both palms up and both palms down. If that's feeling easy, take your shoulders further forwards and then try again. So you push up and down. Either keep that going or you progress into lifting the palms, tuck the toes, lift the knees, place the palms back down and place the knees back down. So palms up. Knees up, palms down, knees down. Palms up, knees up, palms down, knees down. Either you keep that going, or we have another four in a plank position. A little bend in the elbows, remembering what I said about not injuring yourself, no broken hands, please. A bunch of fingers and palms down. Fingers, palms down. As I say, always make as much sound effect as you need to. Often need a little clump feeling through it. And down. Do one more if we can. And down. Good. Place the knees back to the ground. And give your wrists a little roll out or your shoulders a roll out. Good. Well done. Give the hands a complete shake so we feel nice and floppy and rubbery. Okay. Just give the shoulders a roll back. Lots of weight for our arms today. So come into a downward facing dog from here. Okay, just have a little wriggle into it, paddle through the feet, sway the hips side to side, get your body moving. Take a deeper breath, just enjoy that feeling of being upside down. Okay, walk the feet up towards your hands, move to forward fold. Keep the feet hips distance. Soft bend in the knees, just hang on to alternate elbows. Again, have a little sway side to side. If your back and hamstrings are free from any injury, then you can see the rock going forwards, backwards in this as well. Whatever feels good to you. Just let yourself feel sloppy and loose, freeing up our bodies a bit this morning. And let the arms dangle to the floor. Take a big breath in where you are. As you exhale, slowly rolling up to standing, pulling belly button to time as you roll up. And then roll the shoulders down when you get to the top. Good. Take an inhale, lift your hands up to the ceiling. You see me? Yes. Good. Exhale out as you forward fold. We can talk about half sun salutations. So halfway lift as you inhale, hands to the floor or the shins. And as you exhale, soften into the legs. Slowly rolling up to standing, bring the hands high above your head again. Inhale, exhale, refold through to the feet. Halfway lift, inhale, exhale, squeeze into the legs. 
Inhale as you rise, hands come behind. Exhale to fold. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, fold again. Inhale as you rise. Last time with this half sun citation, exhale to fold. Halfway lift. Exhale, fold again. Inhale as you rise. And bring your hands to the heart center. Let's take a deep breath in where you are. And exhale, draw belly to spine. Good. If your arms are ready, then take a step to the top of the mat. You start with sun A, Suri so Namaskar A. Um, so either big toes touching and toes spread out around it, or you can take your feet hips distance apart if you prefer to. Either way is fine with me. So take a big breath in as you lift the hands. Let the gaze follow your thumbs. As you exhale, find a forward fold. If you don't have your arms come wide or through the center. Inhale, take a halfway lift. Again, hands behind the to the shins if that helps you lengthen your spine or floor. As you exhale, squeeze into the legs. Step right foot followed by the left foot to plank position, holding there. Take a big breath in. As you exhale, half tap around on the first one, knees, chest, and chin come to the ground. Inhale, reach the chest high as the toes reach away. And exhale, come back into a downward facing dog. Holding here for three breaths. For one. Exhale, with a full, slow breath. Take the opportunity to slow your breath down. Two. Exhale. Find that Ujjayi sound. Three. Exhale. Gaze for the hands, bend the knees. You can step, walk, or jump the feet up to your hands. Take a halfway lift as you inhale. Exhale, squeeze into the legs. Inhale as you rise, hands wide or through center. We go straight back in for a second round. Exhale to fold. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, left foot followed by the right foot back into plank position. Pause, take a breath in. As you exhale, either the half chaturanga where your knees down or full chaturanga, full body. Inhale, lift the chest to cobra again or upward facing dog. As you exhale, come back into a downward facing dog. Three deep breaths. Try taking a little bend into the knees this one, on this one and then press through the hands to reach your tailbone and sit bones higher towards the ceiling. From here, take another last breath. Bring the gaze to your hands, bend the knees, step, walk, or float the feet up to your hands. Inhale, take a halfway lift. Exhale, squeeze into the legs. Inhale as you rise. And exhale, bring the hands back, sorry, back through to your forward fold, going through another round. Halfway lift as we inhale. On this long exhale, take it all the way back to the chaturanga. So breathing out, breathing out, breathing out, all the way to your lower end. So cut the plank position. Inhale, lift the chest to cobra or up to dog. And as you exhale, come back into your dome and facing dog. Three breaths. One. Exhale. Maybe there's a bend in the knees, lengthen your back. Two. Exhale. Maybe your legs are lengthening to stretch your arms. Three, so you can relax your neck, wrap the shoulder blades, bring the gaze to your hands, bend the knees, step, walk, or float the feet to your hands. Halfway lift as you inhale. Exhale, squeeze into the legs. Inhale as you rise. Your last round of A. So exhale as you fold. So this time I want your palms to stay on the ground. So bend the knees as much as you need to, your palms to stay flat. Just take your halfway lift without your palms lifting. So you might just take a big breath in where you are. On your exhale, step or float back to the top anger. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale to downward facing dog. Three breaths, one. Close your eyes. Two. Exhale. Three, exhale, bring gaze to hands, bend the knees, step, walk or float the feet to your hands. Halfway lift, inhale, 
Exhale, squeeze into the legs. Inhale as you rise. And bring the hands to the heart center. Take a full breath where you are. Good. Just have a little wiggle out of your shoulders or anything if you need to. Just going to check we are still recording. Is everything so far so good? Can everyone just put a thumbs up for me? Perfect. Good. Okay, so we're coming into Sun B now. So taking, let me bring that a little bit closer. So you're coming into the top of the mat with your big toes touching. Okay, start with a chair pose. So you're going to inhale, lift the hands. Tailbone twisting kick down. Hold your uh, wrist bent under a couple of breaths. Take your weight back into your heels so your toes will fairly light to the ground. Soften the shoulders and then maybe lifting the gaze if the neck feels okay. If there's any stiffness in the neck or shoulders, just keep the gaze forwards. Take another big breath in where you are. As you exhale, find the forward fold. Halfway lift, arms stay on the ground. Exhale all the way through to your chest right You can step or jump, just keep the breath going out. Inhale, then lift your chest. And exhale, take you to downward facing dog. On an inhale, lift the right foot towards the ceiling. Exhale, place it through to between the hands, turn the back foot, come into warrior. One big breath in as you lift the arms. One exhale takes you back to your chaturanga, so you're breathing out all the way down. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, come back into the downward dog. Inhale, lift the left foot. Exhale, step through. Turn the back foot. Inhale, as you lift the arms high. Long exhale, all the way through to your chaturanga. Breathe all the way out until you are there. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, come back into the downward dog. Pausing, take three breaths. You can hold here or child's pose. Two. Three. Bring gaze to hands, bend the knees, step, walk or jump the feet up. Halfway lift as you inhale. Exhale, fold into the legs, which are the big toes are touching. Inhale, come back into your chair pose with Katasana, and exhale, come to standing. Okay, that was one round, we're going to do three. Inhale, come back into chair. Exhale to fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog, Adam Vishwanasana. Inhale, lift the right foot high. Exhale, step through, turn the back foot. Inhale, rise to warrior one. This time, interlace the fingers to hunt together behind your back and draw the chest open, draw the stretch across the shoulders. We bring in humble warriors, so just feel to your front foot open, take another big breath in. As you exhale, folding to the inside of this front leg, so the forehead comes towards your ankle and gaze towards the back big toes. Squeeze the shoulders higher or further together, and then as you exhale, soften more length through the back of your neck. Take another full breath here. Stay in the fold, release the hands on one either side of this front foot. From here, lift the front leg up towards the ceiling. The right leg is really high. Try to keep these toes reaching up as you take your child's right leg. Keep the toes as high as you can as you come forwards and down. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, downward dog. Other side. Inhale, lift the left leg. Exhale, step up through. We come to warrior one. Inhale, lift the hands up. As you exhale, interlace the hands together behind your back. Inhale, open the chest, squeeze the shoulder blades. Heel toe the front foot open, and as you exhale, fold into the front leg. So uh, forehead is coming towards your ankle, so you can get that down into the ankle bone, and gaze towards the back big toe. Doesn't matter if your humble warrior today is here. Okay, you take it where your body is able to get to. Take a full breath where you are. Keep the body in the folds, release the hands. Sweep left foot high with a big breath in. As you exhale, keep the toes reaching up as you lower chaturanga. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, two downward dog. 
Pausing here or child through for three breaths. One. Slow the breath down. Two. Exhale, side through the mouth if you prefer. Three. Bring the hands, bend the knees, jumping or stepping or shuffling up. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, fold into Uttanasana, make sure big toes are touching. Inhale, Uttanasana, chair pose. And exhale, come to stand. That's two rounds, one more, here we go. Inhale, into chair. Exhale, to fold. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, jump back, chaturanga. Inhale, lift the chest. And exhale, to downward dog. Inhale, lift the right foot, hold there. Bend the knee at the top, and then open the hips out towards that right side of your mat. To reach that top big toe behind you. Keep your supporting legs straight and heel pressing down. Either holding here, or you drop the big toe down towards the floor so you flip over into your wild thing. Your left leg stays straight, the right hand lifts off, and the hips and uh, belly face up to the ceiling. Reach back behind you. Maybe your fingertips can tap the floor. Bring the gaze to the mat, the hands to the mat, and lift the right toes back up again. Take a big breath in. Exhale, step through between the hands, come into warrior one. Your inhale lifts the arms. Exhale, inflate the hands together behind you. So bring in that humble warrior that we just did. Inhale, opens chest. And exhale to fold. Slow down the breath. Big breath in. Full breath out. Stay in the fold, release the hands either side of your front foot. So listen up, this next chaturanga, lift the back foot away from the floor, and this front, your right foot, is going to jump back to the back of the mat to land on it. So keep the floating leg floating, jump back, and then down. Inhale, lift the chest. How did you get on? <laughs> Exhale, down the dog. Or do the other side. Inhale, lift the left leg high. Bend the knee and open the hips out towards that left side. Again, your big toe is reaching back towards the wall towards the right, and your underneath heel is pressing down to so stretch that supporting leg. Either holding here, or you drop over into wild thing, let the left hand lift off the floor so belly and hips can reach up. Maybe the fingertips can tap the floor. Gaze to the mat and hands to the mat, lift the toes back up again, and take a big breath in. Exhale, step through. Inhale, bring you to warrior one. Exhale, clasp the hands behind you. Inhale, open the chest. Exhale to humble warrior. Forehead to inner ankle. Holding, slow down the breath, big breath in. Full breath out. Ujjayi sign with your breath. Stay in the fold. Hands come down to the mat. Lift up the back foot, keep that foot floating. The foot that's on the floor lands at the back of the mat. And then lower. Inhale, lift the chest. Take some coordination practice, that one, so don't worry if it all went squiffy. Exhale, two downward dog. Holding here, or child's pose, three breaths for one. Exhale. Two. Exhale. Three. Exhale. Bring gaze to your hands, bend the knees, step, walk or jump the feet up. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, squeeze into the legs. Inhale, come into your chair pose. Holding your chair pose, bring the hands out to shoulder height in front of you. Interlace your fingers and press the palms forwards like we did at the start of the practice. Take a big breath in. As you exhale, sit the hips lower towards your heels. Press the knees together, make sure big toes and knees are touching. Take another big breath in. Exhale, press further out through the hands, sit further down with your hips. There is one rule in this pose, you are not allowed to roll your poly, so keep pressing out with your hands. And exhale, maybe the hips sink down a bit further. Some of you, if your Achilles is long enough, maybe sit down towards the heel of your feet. Once you're there, it feels a bit more comfortable. 
I can hold you here all day if you like. <laughs> Take another breath where you are. Wherever you are, unlace your fingers and place the palms to the floor, hips lift up. We're coming to Vakasana, your crow pose. So you can take the feet a little wider. Knees come in towards the shoulders, bend your elbows. So your triceps, your upper arms act like a little shelf to your knees. That little scrunch of the hands that we did in your um, wrist warm up, bring that into the fingers so that you're scrunching some grip through the hands. Take the weight forwards. Either you're floating or you pick up one foot and then change, just practice taking weight forwards into the hands, it's rocking. If you're holding pro, hold pro, take another two breaths. Step or jump back, Chaturanga. Inhale, lift the chest. Bring the knees to the floor. I'm just going to show you that transition again. So level one, from pro to jump back. Either toes are on the floor if you're practicing pro, and you step back to lower. If you have floating crow or flying crow, you find the float. Your upper body is already in a chaturanga position. You just have to send your legs towards the back of the mat. Inhale. Give that a go once more. So come back to your crow. Take a breath in. Exhale, come to Chaturanga. Inhale, lift the chest. Let's continue. Exhale to downward dog. Inhale, lift your right foot up. Exhale, step through to between the hands, coming to warrior one that we've just done. As you exhale, coming to warrior two. Inhale, straight up the front leg. And as you exhale, reach forwards. We're coming to Trikonasana. So your back of the hand can come to the shin or the inner ankle, fingers to big toe, or you can take your block under this right hand if you like. We'll hold for five breaths. So grab anything you need to come back into the pose. Any variations is fine. Just think leaning the chest back and slightly tucking the tailbone so that your lower belly pulls in. And last big breath. From here we come to half moon. So just take this left hand to the hip, bend into the front knee and take your block or your hand to the forward of your front foot. Transfer the weight into the front leg and float the back foot up. Maybe lifting left hand. So option to stay here, wobbling is absolutely allowed. If you want to build into it, maybe bring the bind to so your top hand and your top foot connect, hold onto the ankle and press the foot away from the body. Maybe your underneath hand no longer needs a block or the floor. From here you can hold or you bring it into your Kingdanta, Natasarasana. If you want to, play around with it wherever you want to go. If you're still holding half moon, awesome job. Reverse the way you came. From wherever you are, come into pyramid pose. So both hands frame the front foot and your floating foot set down towards the back of the mat. Close enough that we can get the back heel to the ground. So just heel to your feet so that they're on train track lines, either side of kind of the center line of the mat. Take an inhale as you find a halfway lift, chest reaches forward. So then you can have a block under the hands and the hands don't reach the floor. Exhale, fold the forehead in towards your shin. Options to build in towards a paper clip here. The hands reach back to the back thigh. Maybe they interlace around the back leg. Use that to hug yourself in towards the front one. The lower down that back leg and the hands can clasp. The deeper you're going to feel that through the hamstring. Slowly release your clasp if you have it. Um, come into revolve trikonasana. So your left hand is going to come to the outer side of the front foot, right hand to lower back. It's going to be helpful for your balance if you have a block under this left hand. So if you have a block, then maybe take that option. Wherever your hand is, the more you can press into the floor or the block of that left hand, the easier the balance is going to feel. And press down through the back heel as well. It's going to keep you rooted. Maybe then your right arm is up to the ceiling. Relax your neck, or if you're a hardcore Ashtangi dancer, then your drishti, your gaze spot, is up towards your top thumb. 
I find that really restrictive for the breath and the throat. So whatever your throat feels best. Take a full breath in. And as you exhale, come back into your pyramid. Soft bend in the front leg, release any block strength on your mat. Come back into your warrior two feet, so your, turn, your back foot goes further away again, and spin the hands back open. Make sure your front heel is in line with the arch of the back foot, so you might just need to adjust your feet slightly. You're coming to extend inside angle from here, so option one, forearm to front thigh, and top hand reaches over. Slightly tuck the tailbone so you keep space in your lower back. You either hold here, or you bring in a bind or half bind, so your top hand can come over to your lower back, Maybe the underneath hand comes under the leg and you clasp the hands behind you. If you have the bind, then pull the hands away from the torso so your shoulders will open and lean back into your leg. Play around with the way that your hands are facing in your binds. They'll give you different rotations of movement through the shoulder. So ideally, the hand that's on top, palm not to be facing out, just gonna let your shoulder draw more space through. Holding here, if you wanna take, um, <laughs> anything else from here and try a bit of paradise your back foot so it steps up to the top and you lift in that bind the front leg up i won't give too many options in this because i know we've already been holding it a few breaths reverse the way you came wherever you are come back into warrior two from here coming to lunge so bring both arms to face forward so you're looking forwards lift up the back heel and drop the back knee slowly to the floor so we have right knee forwards in a lunge. Your left elbow is going to come across to the front thigh, the elbow to the thigh. Make a fist with the left hand and then wrap the right one on top of it. My top elbow is facing up to the ceiling, not towards the wall behind me. Keep it pointing directly up. Press them together. So the fists of the hand come in front of your heart center. Options you hold here or tuck the toes of the back and lift the back knee. Again, you can bring in bind so the arms can open. Maybe just the top arm wraps around, maybe the underneath arm wraps under as well if you have long, weird, gangly arms. Either holding here, or next level you bring into your full bird of paradise. So again, back foot steps up to the top, and lifting front leg up. Keep the shoulders really rotating so you can straighten that front leg. Wherever you are, start to reverse the way back out a bit, find a lunge again. Inhale, lift both arms up, and exhale, come into a chaturanga. So float the foot up, and take a little hop if you want to, or handstands. Inhale, lift the chest, and come back into downward dog. Bring the gaze to the hands. Lower both elbows to the floor at the same time as so you drop into dolphin. So either holding dolphin, we're going to take about 10 breaths, so you can hold here if you want to. If you know the variations that are coming, then go ahead and play. We're coming into Pinchamarasana variations. On this first round, dolphin is fine. We will build into a stronger forearm balance. So I'm just going to give you this level, and the next level come towards the wall. So you take your dolphin pose up the wall. Elbows are underneath your shoulders. If you have a block, you can want it in your, between your index fingers. You can take that. Walk the feet up the wall. The feet come no higher than your bum, okay, so we're not looking for a um, plank against the wall. Feet in line with your bum, so if you look back, you should be able to see your toes and holding that L shape with your body. So press your chest towards the wall. Take a last breath. And bring the feet down or the knees down. Come into a kneeling position or a child's pose. Give the shoulders a little roll out. Grab a quick sip of water if you want to. We have the whole other side to do. So I'll give you 30 seconds just to take a moment rest. How are we doing? When you're ready, come back into downward dog. Take a deep breath in through your nose and a full breath out through your mouth. Again, deep, slow breath in and a full breath out. Inhale, lift the left leg up. 
Exhale, step through to between the hands, coming to warrior one. Inhale, lift your arms up. Exhale into warrior two. So nudge the back heel round. Straight up the front leg, take a big breath in. As you exhale, reach forward to become into Trikonasana. So either back of the hand to ankle, resting lightly into the shin, or big toe, or block under the hand, any variations you like. You have about five breaths, so adjust yourself if you need to with whatever you need, and come back to the pose. Just mindfully be aware of where your drishti point is, your gaze points, make sure the breath can still move through the throat, bring in that ujjayi sound. From here, we come into Adha Chandrasana, your half moon. So gaze down if it isn't already. Bend the front leg, take the hands forward, so your left hand forwards, and float the back foot. So again, easier to have a block under your left hand. Either you hold here, or you bring in that bind, so your top foot and top hand meets. Press the foot back away from you, so you feel that opening through the groin. Options you hold here and breathe, or you bring it into your king's answer or any other variations that you like. Start reversing the way you came. So come back into half moon, unbind yourself if you had bound, and come into pyramid pose. So the back foot comes down to the floor, and you find that train track lying with your feet. So one foot either side of that central line of the mat. Again, block under the hands if you use the floor. We want both legs to be straight, back heel rooted to the floor. So step in closer if you're in too much of a lunge position. Take a halfway lift, reach the chest forwards. As you exhale, further down the leg, forehead to shin. Again, maybe finding that paper clip feeling, so back hands, um, your hands so catch the back leg and reach down as far as you can towards the uh, calf muscle. Good, gently releasing, we're coming to revolve Trikonasana. So right hand, maybe on a block or your prop, comes to the outer side of your front foot. Left hand either resting to lower back for balance sake, or lifting the left hand further up. Again, the more you press down through the right hand, the easier the shoulders are gonna rotate. And root down through that back heel. Full belly to find on your exhale. Keep the top fingers feeling active. Last breath in. Exhale, find your fold into pyramid again. Place the block out of your way. Come back into your warrior two feet. So again, a little adjustment of your legs. So front heel is in line with the arch of the back foot. Come into extended side angle. So you're either front forearm on the thigh. You use that forearm to keep your knee drawing backwards. Top arm reaches overhead. You either hold here and strengthen into your legs or you start to bring into bind. So top hand can come around your lower back. Maybe underneath hand wraps under and grab hold of it. Again, to play around with the position of your palm facing out, the top palm facing out, so that you enable the shoulder to open. Either you hold here, make sure you're breathing, or you bring in easy bird of paradise, the back foot hops to the top of the mat, and then lift the bound leg up. When you're straight, maybe lengthening the support of the bound leg, and wave to your neighbor with your foot. Slowly reverse the way you came. Good. Lift both hands up to the ceiling, come into a lunge. The back foot is lifting slowly with control, place the back knee down. Your right elbow comes across to the left thigh. Make a fist with the right hand, and your left hand wraps on top of it, so the elbows are stacked one on top of each other. Holding the twist, or you lift up the back knee. Either holding here, or you start to open the arms, maybe finding bind. And you have to get a bit friendly with yourself sometimes when you're figuring out that bind. <laughs> Either holding here, or you build in the full bird of paradise, back foot steps up to the top, and lift the bound leg. Well, keep shoulders rotating, this is straight in the leg. Slowly back down, step back. Lift the hands, take a breath in. Exhale, roll through a chaturanga. Back into downward dog. 
Bring the knees to the floor. Take a child's pose. Take a slower breath. Okay, bring your gaze to me. Pinch on my rasana, your forearm stand. Level one, dolphin. If you have a block, you can do dolphin with your block between your index fingers, so you have some support to press the knuckles into, but you must keep your palms flat to the ground. Level two, from your dolphin you lift up a leg and you take a couple of hops. Do a few either side. One leg will feel easier, one leg will feel weird as hell. Yeah. Level three, you do the dolphin up the wall. So check your legs, uh, your bum, or your hands, I mean, <laughs> what are these things? Are leg distance away from the wall. So heels against the skirting board, wherever your bum is, is where your forearms want to be. So you can again have the block between your index fingers if you want to, or without, it doesn't matter. Lift the hips up and walk the feet as we did in the last round, no higher than your bum. So you press your chest back towards the wall. There can be a bend in the knees, which is absolutely fine. And again, you can try taking one leg to reach up. And then switching. Bring the knees down. Next level, I'm going to kind of rush through these and I'll give you a minute to play around with a few options. Uh, you turn to the wall. Again, forearms down with or without block is fine. And you try kicking up towards the wall. Find the wall with one foot and walk it down towards your bum. Maybe find the wall with two feet. Okay, bring one leg to tuck in towards your torso. Then press your chest or look back towards the other end of the mat. So from there, just let your head relax. So your chest is got through then towards the back of the mat. Squeeze the other heel in towards your bum, and you should be pretty on balance. Okay, next level, obviously, is your full pinch of marasana, forearm set. Go, play around, you have a minute. Take a child's pose. Let the arms come down the sides of the legs so the shoulders were left. Roll up into kneeling to give your shoulders a roll back. If you did a level that would usually kind of freak you out, give yourself a mental high five. Yeah. And then come back into downward dog with your bum facing the wall behind you or away from the wall, wherever you want to be. So from your downward dog, make your stance a little bit shorter. Take a little bend in the elbows and jump your hands to your feet. Okay, if you miss that, I'll do that once more to so show you. Bring your hands to your feet. Go. Hook the peace fingers into the inside and underneath of the big toes. So you fold into Uttanasana, elbows wide, full head tucks in. Lift the shoulders away from your ears, let the back of the neck relax. Breathe. Bend the knees, release the toes, halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, soften into the legs. Okay, turn yourself around so you face the wall. Handstand hops or bunny hops. Today, it doesn't matter if you're new to rocket, new to being on your hands. If your handstand bunny hops look like this, that's okay. There is a split second in there where you're talking a handstand. It's long enough to take a screenshot then it's Instagram worthy. 
Okay, otherwise you want to try as best we can to jump both feet at the same time and tuck them in towards your body. That little scrunch of the hands that we did in the wrist warm-up is going to help here and slightly turn your hands out, just a little nudge. that will help bring more distribution of your weight. So as you rock forward into the fingers, they scrunch up to support you. Okay, again, we have a minute. Find what hobby you can, the ball is there to catch you if you need it. I'm not responsible for any DIY holes in your wall. Ten more seconds, let's keep going. Um, yes, good stuff. Back in the down with dog. <sighs> you can do it. Step one foot forward, either way. We're coming into a wide leg forward fold, so either way that you can see me on the screen. So be as wide as the feet as wide as the mat, and then parallel your feet. So the outer edges of your feet are parallel with the edges of your mat, and hands are under the shoulders. Forward fold into here. Again, hands on the block if the hands don't quite reach the floor, it's just fine. Hands on the ground. If you have tripod headstand in your practice, and I usually hate when teachers kind of say that, but obviously I can't support you at all here. So I'll turn to the side. Again, you want to use a wall. If you have done this before, I don't usually do this if you, if you, if you want to or you feel supported. If your head does come down and you float the up through straddle. Play around with the positioning of your legs. If you're in headstand, come back to your fold. Take a halfway lift as you inhale. And soften over the legs. Okay, from here, open the legs a bit wider. So we're coming to a box split, whatever that looks like for you. Drop onto the forearms if we can. Take three breaths wherever you are, even if you're sat there laughing at me. From here, either stay where you are while I'm explaining this. So if we can, we take a full slide back, so you sit down into your straddle. Okay? If wherever you are means you have to do this, <laughs> then do that. Come into straddle. <laughs> Good. So let's take the left hand out behind your left leg, reach the right arm high, so take a breath in. And as you exhale, lean across to the left. Soften the shoulders away from your ears. Either holding here, or you bring the back of the left hand to the inside of that left leg. So you can press back of the hand and the leg together so the chest will lift open and then reach further across. For some of you, maybe more mobile, you take hold of the foot if it's in reach. Keep that right sit bone trying to press down. Bring yourself back up. Right hand out to the side of the right leg, left hand lifts up, take a breath in. Exhale, reach across to the side. Either holding here or back of the right hand comes to the inner of the right ankle. Press them together and you'll feel the chest press round. Lean further over maybe. Again, for some of you, maybe finding a deeper fold, maybe you find the foot, or right arm maybe to the other side or holding onto the foot, wherever you want to be. Left sit bone is trying to press down. It will float off slightly if you're deep into it. And bring yourself back up. Good, roll the shoulders down. If you have two blocks, then use two blocks. I actually, I actually don't have two blocks today. <laughs> so I'll go with that. So bring your legs in a little bit closer than they are already. This is not about stretch, this is about core strengthening. I'm going to shuffle forwards a bit so we can see. Okay, so we have the hands either side of your right foot. Okay, either side. Press the fingertips into the floor, lean back, and see if you can lift the right leg up. 
place it down. Hands either side of the left leg, lean back, lift the leg. Place it down. Hands either side of the right leg, lean forwards, pick up your bum. If you have blocks, blocks under the hands is going to give you more height. Place the hips down. Hands either side of the left leg, lean forwards, lift the bum up. Place it down. Hands either side of the right leg, lift up your bum and the right heel. Place the heel down, place your bum down. Hands left side. Lift your bum, lift left heel. Heel down, bum down. Right leg, either repeat whatever level felt your kind of max again, or you lift both legs and both bums. Both bums, lift your bum and your heels. Down. Oh, makes your legs feel a bit crampy. Give the thighs a little bit of love. Other side. Both heels, both bums. All your bums, all your feet. Here we go. And down. Oh, my left quad hates that so much. But it's good, right? Okay, either repeat that again. This is the last one, I promise. Those of you that are rocketers and ninjas, we bring into a transition. So you lift your hips, your heels, and slide the feet through. So you come into cross, you can bring in a kumbhinyasana from there as well if you want to, and slide it back through the way you came. It's hard with our blocks. Other side, or you can just watch if you want. We lift the heels in the back, slide through, maybe kumbhinyasana, come back through. Wow. And down. Uh, how do we do? <laughs> give your shoulders a roll out and your legs a bit of a laugh. Bring the feet to the floor, give your knees a rock side to side. Give them a kiss if they've got crumpy then. Tell them that you love them really. How are we doing on time? Okay. Ah, so much we could do if you're not already dead. Um, let's take our wind down. So bring yourself onto your back from there, knees into your chest. Take a little rock side to side. Let your arms flop out to the side and go, oh my God, I can't believe I just got through that. Take a big breath in. And a side through the mouth. <sighs> Take the feet to the floor. So if you've done the last two days of videos with me, then you will have known this quad stretch now. So take your feet as wide as the mat. Take a rock of the knees going side to side. Drop both knees all the way down to the left. Both knees down to the left. Your right hand takes the right ankle and tuck the heel towards your bum. So if you're feeling any pinching in the knee, either try tucking your heel closer towards the buttock or forget this altogether. I don't want to injure your knees at all. Reach that right knee forwards and then down towards the floor. And as you exhale, think bringing your lower back and your tailbone closer to the ground. So hopefully you're feeling a pretty spicy stretch across the quads or the hip flexor. And after that lift uh, work, you should be, it should feel pretty good. Slowing down the breath. Bring the knees through the center, stretch that knee out if you need to. Take the feet as wide as your mat and drop both knees down to the right. Your left hand takes hold of the left heel and tuck that round towards your bum. So again, any pinching in the knee, try bringing the heel closer towards your bum or forget it altogether. <laughs> Reach the left knee further forwards and then down towards the floor. Take a big breath in. And then using your exhale, try and tuck the tailbone or bring your lower back closer towards the floor. And just opening out into that juicy stretch across your thigh. Gently releasing, bring both knees to face the ceiling, stretch that knee out if you need to. Take the last little rock side to side, roll the wrists out, stretch the hands. Take any last postures that you feel your body needs, either holding a twist or take a happy baby, anything that helps reduce your back, brings you back into the world of living. 
And then find a shavasana where you're feeling comfortable and flat to the ground. But as you have a bit of wall space, if you want to turn around and put your feet up the wall, then you can do. Just going to hold on the recording for a minute, just while we have this shavasana time. Just let your breath really slow down. Tuck the shoulder blades down your back, so there's space around your chest. And soften through the hinge of your jaw and then you're gripping away from your forehead. If you're still holding that ujjayi sound with your breath, you set that up to become a little more effortless. Acknowledging the heat of your body, the space that you feel in your body, maybe the knack of the bits of your body. Take the last three breaths where you are. And bending the knees so your feet find the ground again. Lengthen your spine into the mat. Take a deep breath with a sigh through the mouth as you exhale. And either roll yourself to one side or take a gentle rock to seated. In any comfortable seated posture. My cat's come on to say goodbye. Good. So I just invite you to close your practice, bringing to mind just one thing that you can feel grateful for today. Acknowledge one thing that you like about yourself today. And one thing that you achieved in your practice today. And my cat's come to say goodbye. Thank you guys, well done. Um, I'll try and do another rocket session again where we'll cover a couple of different moves. Have a lovely day, get some sunshine, it's beautiful out there. Bye.